Today is unlike anything we've ever done before. I'm the one being interviewed. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy Podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So this episode is totally different. It is, like I said at the beginning, unlike anything we've ever done before. I'm the one being interviewed today. We recently did an epically long Facebook Live. We're going to break it up into three episodes. And we did this about the, if you remember the podcast series that we just did about my takeaways from Blackberry Farm and my time with Jeff Walker and Amy Porterfield and, uh, and Michael Hyatt. And we did this long, like, ep- like episode series, right? 12 episode series. And we wanted to take it even deeper. So Mark Sievercrop on my team interviewed me, interviewed me, and we took questions from people watching. We, I mean, it was one of our like best Facebook lives ever in terms of engagement, just all kinds of stuff. It was crazy, the comments that were coming in. And we had some really, really cool moments. I'll, I'll just say some of the comments were awesome. And uh, so we're going to share that with you over the next three episodes. So stick around and I'm just going to cut to that interview that Mark did with me. I kind of introduced you at the beginning and then uh, then we get right into the interview. Some awesome stuff. So make sure to stick around for the next three episodes because they're going to be amazing. Really, really interesting today. I'm excited. I'm like super pumped to be doing this. I'm also nervous because I have no idea what Mark is going to ask. Now, in full disclosure, I asked him to please put the question that he's asking me up in front of me at that time. And I told you no. (laughs) So I do know the first question just because it's like right behind the camera, but I have no idea what the other questions are. That's by design. We're just going to keep this kind of informal and, and whatnot. So, a uh, quick backstory. I uh, had an opportunity uh, to spend uh, four days at a place called Blackberry Farm. Uh, just Google it. You guys will uh, you guys will see just a, a, how amazing this place is. It's a place that's won pretty much every award you can imagine uh, for customer service, for food, for hospitality. Um, just I mean, it's un unreal uh, place. And I got to hear the story of how this beca- uh, the, the how this came about. Like years ago, when Michael Hyatt started his affiliate program for Five Days to Your Best Year Ever, he and Stu McLaren, who you've heard a lot about the last few days, uh, he and uh, or not not he and Stu, Megan and Stu, were uh, having lunch or something, talking about prizes. And, and Megan just said, "I want it to be something that's not, you know, the everyday prizes. I don't want it to be cash. I don't want it to be whatever. I want- Michael wants it to be an experience." And so he, they made it into an experience, all right. And so we have a podcast series. We had a 12-episode podcast series. Mark can drop the link to that if he hasn't already. And um, hey, Phil. And, uh, and hey, Nicole. And so, by the way, if you guys are, are jumping on, we can't see you unless you let us know. So drop a comment, say hi, tell us where you're, you're joining us from, um, all that stuff. Ask questions as we go along, all that stuff. But just want to be able to say hi to you as we're on here live. And so uh, the top affiliates for Michael, the top three affiliates got to, uh, got to go to Blackberry farm. And uh, so that's how we ended up there. So we did this 12, uh, 12 episode series on the podcast. Mark dropped the link. It's mattmcwilliams.com forward slash Blackberry. And um, just to the takeaways, the things that I learned, I mean, hanging out with Jeff Walker, Amy Porterfield, and Michael Hyatt and their spouses and stuff, you'll learn a lot. And, and I certainly did. And it was just, uh, it was one of those, one of the episodes is called, it's a, my mountaintop experience. And I literally was on the top of Walker mountain, ironically, and, uh, just had an amazing time, amazing stuff. And so what we wanted to do today was, yes, we did the podcast series and that was like the takeaways, the takeaways, the business and you know, whatnot takeaways. We want to take it kind of a, a layer deeper. Cause that was just me, you know, take sitting there with my notes and talking about what I got out of this trip and, you know, all the things that I got. We want to take it a step further. So Mark's going to interview me today and ask me uh, a bunch of questions that I don't know. So, uh, hey, Heather. 
And uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Like, let's just jump into it, Mark, and ask these questions. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you know, and, and see, Matt, this is cool for me because the minute you came back, we've done this, by the way. We have not, and we should do it more often. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know, the, one of the things that's exciting to me is the minute you came back, I mean, the first Monday you were back, you know, we didn't talk the whole week. You were gone, obviously. And so you got back and I'm like, okay, so tell me about it. And you'd kind of, you'd done your whole Zygernik open loop thing and said, remind me to tell you what Chad Cannon said. And I'm like, all right, fine. What did Chad Cannon say? Um, I could but, have told you in a text, but that would like, yeah, that would it wasn't cool. like, I know, I know for, cause I think I said it's about you, didn't I? You did. Yeah. All right. No, so don't forget to ask me about that because I did not cover that. That's actually a really good topic of conversation, by the way, guys, is what Chad Cannon, that's Michael, Michael Hyatt's CMO, said about Mark at lunch one day. A really, uh, actually, it was like a really, I don't know, what life changing moment for me, which is kind of weird because he said it about Mark, but you'll see why. <laughs> and don't forget to ask me about that. Please ask me about that later. But yeah, this is the first time we've ever done this interview. So, one thing I'll ask you guys if, we get, you know, if we get through this unscathed and you guys like this <laughs> format, you like this where Mark's interviewing me, let us know and we'll, we'll make sure we work these into the calendar more, more frequently. All right. So back yeah. to what you were saying. Yeah. So can I just, I just got to say that was so cool because like I texted Mark, I'm like, dude, do you want me to tell you what Chad Kennedy said? He's like, what? And I was like, it's about you. Never and mind, for like later. five days. <laughs> that, happened on a two, that happened on Tuesday yeah. at lunch. So for six days, Mark has no idea what Chad said about him. Good right. or bad? I think I may have said it was good. Don't worry. I, yeah, you did. You didn't tell me it was yeah, good. Yeah, but, but still, did he say I like Mark's haircut? Right. Did, you know, my man, Mark just you know really has a great. What did he say? You know, hey Tammy, one of our new start starters, Hello. one of our new start mastermind members. What's can I up, can man? I just say before before we jump in, uh, Tammy, I like Tammy. She was so much fun yesterday. Like yeah. We were talking, I, I mean, there's a cone of silence, so I'm not going to really say a ton of what was talked about. But good, good, one of the good, things that Tammy said that I thought was awesome is she's just like, I've done a lot of things in my life and I just want to have fun. And I'm like, hey, we're going to get along great. I like having fun too. Love it. So, love it. So hi, Tammy. All right. So yeah, so we talked and you shared a ton of stuff. And so some of the things that, some of the questions, Matt, I think might not even, you may have mentioned it in a podcast episode, but it came more from the conversations we had because you shared some really cool stuff as well. But the first thing I wanted to ask you was, and you even mentioned it in, in the introduction here is you referred, as I was listening back through all these episodes, you referred to this as a mountaintop experience for you several times. So you may have mentioned it. Why is that? And turn it, turn off, turn me off. So I don't hear me in the background. She's the ways. I'm oh, trying to respond to Gwen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, oh, why, okay, why was this such a mountaintop experience for you? And what do you mean by that? Well, it was a, it was a bit of play on words because I literally recorded a podcast episode about 80% um, down a mountain and called Walker Mountain, which is fun. It's like day three of spending, you know, four days with Jeff Walker. And then the, there's like three mountains you can climb at Blackberry Farm, and one of them is Walker Mountain. And we chose that because we only had like an hour and 45 minutes, and it was the lowest one. And so we chose that because otherwise we would never have made dinner that night. And um, so we climbed up to the top of of Walker Mountain. And actually, there's oh, I didn't post this picture. I wish I had my phone on me. I could show you guys. So um, we climb up, and, and we're coming down, and... I remember like standing at the top. Well, what I, I'm sorry, I take that back. What I thought was the top of the mountain. It turns out there's another 200 feet because it like you go up to the top and then you go like level, it levels off and you go around for a while. And it's kind of like you're going to come back and come and then go a bit down. And no, you go up another 200 feet. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know, and there's a yoga platform at this point. So it's like, it makes sense. If there's this yoga platform, you would do that at the top of the mountain, not 200 feet before the top of the mountain. Right. Um, and so anyway, I get up there and it, in this, this spot opens up, like it's just trees, 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 nothing but trees, trees and trees. Right. And then no joke, the width of like maybe two big, I've got a big screen TV on the other side of this where I'm seeing everything. Two of those, it is like eight feet wide. That's it. Eight feet wide. There's this opening and it looks right down the property. So you look over the, the lake, you look over the, uh, the the barns, you see the the inns in the background, you can see some of the, the homes that are on the property. 
and and you see the horses down below and it is just beautiful and so i i stopped and, and i and i asked tara about it and she's like no i, I never saw it because she kept going but i'm like you know fiddle farting around behind her like oh no pictures you know like i'm taking pictures of everything like i got pictures of like pine cones you know <laughs> and and i take this picture of this spot and i'm sitting there at dinner next to jeff that night and he's like yeah there's this spot when you get up on walker mountain and he's like i took a picture of it and i'm like Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Was it this one? And we're like, it's the exact same picture, you know? And it was so cool. And so, um, but as I'm standing at uh, at that moment, again, not at the top of the mountain, I, I, I just, I, I don't know what this thought, like this, the flood of not emotions, but just like this, this thought came over me. How did they get here? And I don't mean like, well, I went over the creek and then, you know, up <laughs> the, the river and through the woods. Steps, and then I did the zigzag up for like 800 feet. And then I walked around and then, you know, not, I had to get here that way. Although, admittedly, I was so out of breath that I was thinking, how did I get here? You know, <laughs> who am I? Who am, am I staying, staying in? <laughs> <laughs> um, look it up. Jim Gaffigan, what room am I staying in? You know, you'll see it. <laughs> And, and I was literally like, how did I get here? And so I was thinking back and it was just one of those things where I like stood there. I mean, perfect weather. I don't know if you guys have ever had one of those experiences where it's just like you're in a place where you're not normally there. I'm not normally, you know, 85% up a mountain. I'm not normally like, I don't normally feel the breeze. I don't normally feel the sunlight and I'm not normally like the perfect temperature. I don't know if anybody ever, if, if you ever noticed that, like, most of us are usually a little too hot. We're a little too cold, you know, and this is like Goldilocks, you know. And so I'm just, like, I'm just feeling this stuff. And I'm thinking, how did I get here? And so I start thinking back to um, just the beginnings and, and our journey and um, and all that stuff. And I, and I went, you know, how I got here was at the very beginning of the year, probably in, in January, we set an irrational goal to be one of Michael's top three affiliates. And I remember telling you, Mark, I remember telling you, mm -hmm. like, I, I get it. That might not be the best use of our time in the short run financially. You know, we could probably do better things to make more money in that period of time. But I wanted it. And I wanted it for two reasons. One, I wanted to be there at Blackberry Farm. I wanted to hang out. I knew Jeff was going to be there. I knew Jeff Walker was going to be one of the top three because he's always one of the top three. And I figured it might be, you know, Pat Flynn or, or Ryan Levesque possibly would be the other, you know, the other two, you know, one of the other two. And it's irrational. Or as, um, as Jeff Walker would say, word of the year, unreasonable. It's unreasonable for me to be there with any of those guys based on where we're at in our journey. It turned out that Pat was one of the top three, but he couldn't make it. So Michael and his team invited Amy Porterfield, which was, you know, just as awesome. And cause I'm a huge fan of hers. And so it was unreasonable. We set that goal and we pointed to it for the whole year. So that was number one is I wanted yeah. to be there with them. Number two, I just wanted to prove that we could do it. I wanted to prove to myself and I wanted to prove to, I think it really was just to myself. I, 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 I really I didn't really want to prove to anybody else. I didn't really have anybody else to prove anything to. I just wanted to prove to myself that we could do that because we had finished years ago. We had finished fifth and then we finished fourth and it was always, we were always so freaking close. I was like, no, we are going to finish top three. And so the mountaintop experience was just the realization of we set a ridiculously ambitious goal. Hey Jim. And we achieved it. Mm -hmm. And we achieved it. And it was just like, and I, this kind of sounds woo woo guys. I realized that, but I, and I don't have many moments like this. I, I truly don't. I wish I did where, I mean, it, it was almost like the scene out of a movie where I sat there at the top of my, and I remember my arms just fell down like this. And I mean, the wind was perfect. And, and, and I just, I like, I received it. I'm not one of those people who typically receives things. Like I'm, I'm a, my, my favorite, my favorite two words are what's next. What's next? What's mm -hmm. next? All right, great. We did that. Like even today, like boom, yesterday we just finished. Hey Dell, we just finished our best affiliate promotion ever. We're going to talk about that on the Facebook live next week. 
we just capped off our best affiliate promotion. You know what? I celebrated for like, you know what we did? We went to breakfast as a family this morning and I immediately, I'm like, what's next? What's next? That was the entire celebration. But in this moment on that mountain, I went like this. And I, and I just, I breathed deeply and the air was cleaner. I mean, I'm in the great smoky mountains. So of course the air is cleaner. Um, it's ironic because they're not smoky at all. Um, it's like dumb and dumber, man. I thought the Rocky Mountains would be a whole lot rockier than this. <laughs> anyway, and I'm just like that. And I remember going, you know what? We did it. So that was my mountaintop experience. Nice. I like it. So, I, you know, I had the thought when you mentioned dumb and dumber. It's like, okay, which, uh, which what's the next pop culture reference going to be on this? And it's got to be a Brian Regan something. I'm not sure what. It has to. Probably does. It's have going to be. To be. Um, no, I, you know, and it was so cool. And we can get more into this. And this is where I go off the rails before we even start with the questions. Um, <laughs> so you're welcome for adding the questions that aren't going to be the right ones. But, you know, you talk about, you know, how did I get here? And, you know, we set this goal. But I know from conversations with you, and I know also, Matt, from conversations that we've had in a room with Jeff Walker, Jeff will see this at some point. You were pretty dang excited to be hanging out with Jeff Walker. I mean, and Michael Hyde, you know, and, and Michael's been a client and you know him and your friends, but it's wow. still, I mean, these three, these three are people that you, that you look up to and you have for a long time. So what is the, I mean, what, what's the, I don't even know how to ask this question, but how do you go from being kind of a fanboy at times to realizing you're in the same room with these people, you've earned the right to be in the room with these people and that you have things of value to add to them? Because I remember some conversations you and I had where there was different things that you told Jeff, you know, and, and gave feedback and, yeah. and you were able to do so. So what was that dynamic like? And how did that maybe, did it change throughout the week? Or, you know, was there things they did that made you feel more comfortable? Or, I mean, just what was that dynamic? I think, I think a lot of my background has a lot to do with being comfortable with that. Like I grew up in Nashville. I grew up in a, the two places I lived uh, for a good part of my life were just outside of Atlanta and just outside of Nashville and when we lived outside of Atlanta, my the the golf course my dad ran was where all the athletes played. So it was like nothing. We we always had seats front row, third baseline, like talking to the players. And my dad played with the players. It was nothing for my dad. I mean, I've I've played with you know music. Uh, Garth Brooks manager. You know, it was, I've played with art the guys from REM. Not Michael Stipes. I've actually never met Michael. But um, uh, was it Mike, Mike Mills and, and Bill Barry, I think, were the, the two that we played with at a golf course. It's like the seventh ranked golf course in the world. And so I will say, and I, don't say, I say none of that to brag. I say that to say like having that as my as my background um, growing up at a, you know, at a golf course where it's like me and then Clint Black and then the head coach for the Tennessee Titans. And those they're just guys definitely um, definitely contributes to the fact that I'm able to like, not be like, <laughs> you know, internally I'm like that. I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's Clint Black and Jeff, Wish, you know, Jeff Fisher. Um, yeah. You know, internally I'm like pitch. I'm like, we go out in the middle of the golf course one day, me and my dad. And it's, and I'm literally, I'm like, all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, I'm playing golf with Vince Gill. Like, and it was in, you know, the funniest thing, just side note, he is like the single most normal person I've ever met in my life. He's actually a bit of a dork. <laughs> <laughs> just as a side note. And it was, so, so it became one of those things where like internally I'm like, and I'm like, we didn't have smartphones back then or I'd been like, selfie, you know, look mom. Cause she loves my mom is like the biggest Vince Gill fan in the world. And so, and I did, I was like, Hey, can I get like a signed picture for my mom? you know, and, and stuff like that internally, but I'm like freaking out, but I had to learn how to manage that. And so I think having that practice for, you know, 15, 20 years yeah. uh, contributes to the ability to function and not come across like a dork, but you're right. Like I can come on. I love this. Why I was nervous to do this because it's like, there's the side of me that's like, yeah, I was hanging out with Jeff Walker, Amy Porterfield, Michael Hyatt. And then I, and I say it like that, but you know, the backstory, which is like, oh, is that do, 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 you know, <laughs> and then what was it like? <laughs> Jeff Walker touched me, you know, not in an appropriate way, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> did you see, he said my name. And, um, and so 
there is that aspect of it. And I totally forget the question. I was like, how do you, how do you function? Yeah. How, I mean, I, how do you, what was the dynamic like? And, and did it change throughout the week where, I mean, did you go in knowing um, that you were going to be able to provide a ton of value for these people or yeah, did it kind of grow into as the week went on? I, I, I would love to say that no. And I discovered something and I, I found my superpower Tuesday afternoon. Um, <laughs> I knew I would, I, I think it's, um, you know, I think just because of the people that we've worked with, you know, we've worked with, I mean, you work with somebody like Kevin Harrington, who's a, you know, half a billionaire and, you know, has had all the success he has. And when I can sit at a table with him and, and go just boom, 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 and contribute to him and he's going, whoa, I figure I can probably do that with, you know, other people. And so I think yeah. experience helps, but at the same time, I, I, I'll just, you know, again, this would be a million percent honest. There is that moment where when I say something and he goes, huh, that's a good idea. I go inside. I'm like, yes. So yeah, there is that moment. I mean, because, you know, and uh, there's a couple of things that I made note of as I was listening through the episodes preparing for this, you know, one was you made the comment to them that you felt like a wiener in a steakhouse. I did. And, I so there, is that, there is that, yeah. oh my gosh, these guys are super, super successful. And you even made that comment. Like they are way more successful than you are. And I mean, that's, you know, and, and I love, I love what, it, what episode is it? It's like um, comparisons and something. I don't remember. On comparisons and insecurity. Yes. I share the, I share the two quotes that I, you know, if you guys have followed us for a while, you know, that um, John Acuff says, never compare your beginning to someone else's middle or end. Wasn't that Stephen Furtick? No. Stephen oh, Furtick okay. says the reason we, and I'm, I'm going to butcher this by a couple of words. The reason we struggle Oh, maybe yeah. maybe that is John A. No, the reason we struggle with insecurity, Stephen Furtick says, the reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel. That's right. And so that, that's the day. And we talked about this the last day um, at lunch or at breakfast, you know, with, with Michael and Jeff. Uh, Amy had already left. And, you know, our spouses are there too. So, and they're contributing a lot. And it was really interesting to get their perspective because they're not like, in social media they're not doing social media for business yeah um and it, it was really interesting to get their perspectives because i've never really been that big on social media i don't spend a lot of time and i don't really follow anybody that i don't know on right. some level and it i and i only follow you know about 12 people and i kind of know they're behind the scenes anyway so I'm not seeing their highlight reel and going, golly, why is my not life not as good as theirs? Anybody, any like you compare anybody's highlight reel. You compare, I mean, good grief. Let, let's just find like the most success. You compare Bill Gates behind the scenes to like, you know, so in, like somebody with a thousand Twitter followers highlight reel. And that highlight reel is going to be better than Bill Gates behind the scene because guess what? gosh, I don't know how to say this without just being totally crass. Guess what? Bill Gates gets diarrhea too. <laughs> I mean, how else? I don't know how else to say that. Bill Gates had, I think he has kids. Bill you Gates heard it here first, folks. With streaming, right? Bill <laughs> Gates, like everybody, you know what? Your kids aren't perfect and your kids do stupid stuff. And sometimes it's funny and sometimes it makes you want to pull your, well, clearly Mark had more of these than me. Um <laughs> But like in all seriousness, that's that's life. We don't post that crap on Instagram. Yeah. Most people don't. Most people, at least in our business, don't get on Instagram and and post about the fact that it's like, you know, that post about the fact that, the, you know, their webinar broke and this or that and that they were ready to, you know, six hours ago, they were ready to quit on their online business. Nobody posts that on Instagram. Yeah. They post on Instagram, get ready to go live for my webinar. Look how amazing my setup is. That's what they post. So we we look at that and go, wow, they have a better setup than me. Wow, they have you know better live streaming technology. Um, no, no, they, I mean, you're seeing the highlights. Yeah. You're seeing like, literally, you're seeing 30 seconds out of their entire freaking day and judging – you're 23 out, you know, 23 hours, 59 minutes and 30 seconds by that. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, those are two quotes that I've, I've lived by. You know, I love, I love what Tammy said and she said, you know, how are you defining success? Yeah. And then she said, I think we're all successful just being here. We each mm. are special or 
are special in, in different ways. And I think, you know, that's exactly it. But, you know, from the conversations I had with you, you know, I think it's just, it's that, it's that tension, you know, of, yeah, they're far along, knowing that they're farther along, knowing that they've been in business longer, knowing they've had more life experience, all these things, and being okay with, I'm not quite there yet, but also that tension of, that's where I want to be, you know, and, and how do I get to that point and what can I learn from them? And so I think that, you know, as I was thinking about that, that's kind of what I was, yes. what I was thinking through is the fact that, you know, it's, I think it's, it's good for us to remember that we're not where other people are and we haven't had the experiences they've had. But at the same time, I think it's also good that we look at that and say, oh my gosh, I do want to be where they're at. I do want to have that kind of business, or I do want to uh, be able to do those sorts of things because that's what, at least for me, motivates me. And it helps yep. me to want to get, um, get to those points. So uh, a super cool experience there. All right. So that was part one of this series. Keep coming back for the next two parts. And if you want to see the Facebook live, if you want to just yeah, cut to get, I want to get the rest. Uh, I got an episode or a link in the uh, the show notes for this episode. A link in the show notes. Go check that out, and you can watch the Facebook Live. Drop us a comment and do all that stuff. Uh, with that, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows? might end up being featured on this podcast.